गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दिस एनविरोमेंट वेरिएबल एनविरोमेंट वेरिएबल वॉट द सिंटैक्स ऑफ दैट इज नेम इक्वल्स वैल्यू वेर एग्जैक्टली इट इज यूज इज the softwares whenever they want to uh, find the address where exactly it gets installed it is that it is in the c drive d drive where exactly it is stored that address is stored in one place that place is called as a this environment variable in the previous classes i have shown in the my computer right click properties their environment variable you can see the entire list in the same way the unix operating system also you can get the uh, uh, environment variables programmatically if you want to get it there are so many functions are there get environment if you just pass the name you will get the value if you want to store a new environment variable in the form of name equals value then you can use the put environment but it will overwrite if they if it exist with that name it is going to overwrite there is one more function called set environment this set environment you can you have to pass the name second argument value the third one whether you want to overwrite or not you can give it with one integer value zero if you give it is not going to overwrite if it already exists if you pass a non zero value uh, 100% it is going to overwrite unset means it is going to remove the entry of that environment variable and this uh, environment variable uh, it is not for functions it is uh, not supported in all the flavors of unix you can see it in the table in the linux 3.2.0 all these functions uh, uh, are, are accessed means you can use it in those program but in other ways in the other uh, uh, solaris is or free bsd or posix standards only uh, a certain set of functions have been allowed the next is the set jump and the long jump yesterday i was telling you with the example i am going to discuss the set jump and the long jump see here there is one function uh, with one header file that is a unique header file the next three is uh, it is a function signatures just a function declaration before uh, if you inbuilt function it means user defined functions if you write before the main functions no need to write this declaration since you have written first the main function then the user defined functions these three declarations you have to write therefore there are three user defined functions do line command underscore add and get token there is no two arguments for this it is a void and for do line a uh, character star what is this uh, entire program is all about is this program it will get the input from the user it will wait for the user to enter something a line by line then it takes that string that entire line string and it will start processing that entire string a token by token it starts processing means it will do something with those tokens whatever the user enters if the user enters the unix is very bad subject it starts uh, taking u n i x what it is going to process those tokens that is not necessary now what we are trying to see here is how exactly the memory looks whenever we do this execution whenever we do this we write this type of programs and execute how much memory is allocated in the how much size is allocated space is allocated in the memory how exactly it looks that we are discussing and what was the problem with this how the set jump and long jump will uh, solve the problem of this see here there is one function called do line there is a function called command add and we are not worried about the uh, the logic of get token 
get token means we will do something other uh, getting the uh, uh, getting the character by character and then uh, we'll proceed that we are not worried about the the uh, body of the get token the overall the get token is it is going to process the each token or it is going to return the each token to the command add function and then then we will start processing we are, that is why the complete logic is not written but we are want to see how exactly uh, the memory look like what is the problem there how set jump and long jump will solve those problem see here i'll explain this do line within the do line there is one variable called command one more pointer that will be stored in the another uh, token pointer which is a global variable here there is a global point uh, variable it will take one by one get token function if it is greater than 0 means it has returned some one car one ka uh, uh, a token then if it is an switch i uh, we are stored in a variable called cmd in the switch if it matches token add only one case we have written for this if it matches add then one function we are calling command underscore add here what we are doing once again token we are going to get to uh, get a token with the function call will go to this token and it will return some value and we are not worried about the next part of the code there are three user defined function and what is there in the main function is one uh, character array there is one character array in the while loop f get s means it is equal to this can f in this array maximum number of characters standard input means input file we are going to get the input and we are going to pass that content to the function called to do line the user enter something that you are going to pass it to the do line function and the control will go here the control will come inside and then if it is a command it is going to add the command means command add function the function call will go here get the token from this function and the rest of the processing is about uh, that is not at all important for us this is how the control user enters pass it to the, the user what the enters one line the string pass it to the do line function the control will come here then uh, you check for the get token if something is there if the user enters something is there then go inside this switch the control will go to the command add it will come here then it will get the token this is all the code about next whenever you see you have seen the transfer of control from one function to the other you have seen the control from one act to the other what happens is whenever there is a function call whenever there is a function call uh there should be a return address should be stored somewhere because it the control should come back that is why whenever there is a function call one stack frame a one stack frame is stored in the memory what does one stack frame contains see there are three functions are there stack frame for main there is a spaces is allocated stack frame for do line some space is allocated stack frame for command and what does the stack frame contains see there are two stack frames here there is a uh, the function name is draw square and draw line some example it is not related to this example just i want to show what does the some variables return addresses a parameters the arguments related to the draw uh, draw squares all these things all these things we call it as a stack frame here the draw square is one one function here just i am showing with some another example what does the stack frame contains what are all the arguments that you pass to that function 
where it has to come back the return addresses all the other locales of this draw square everything we are going to call it as one stack frame in the same way this the stack frame it is related to the main this stack frame is related to the do underscore line this stack frame is related to the command underscore add see see the direction of this stack growth in this program in this program there are three functions main do line command add and also get token even that will also come into picture another function if we if you write another five functions if you write another five functions the stack frames in the memory it is going to increase the stack growth will increase what is the problem so much of memory is allocated for this single program itself for this program itself so much of memory is been allocated for this for some other process if you execute it's a problem right execution time will be more because you want to get the value it has to go to this memory location open the stack frame get the arguments it is not only storing after that it is going to access those uh, values from this stack frame that is why the number of stack frame we have to reduce in the memory in the stack in the stack we have to reduce these stack frames since there is a transfer of control since there is a transfer of control from one function to the other function from this function to the command hand from this command hand the control will go to the get token since there is a so much of transfer of control from one function to the other the stack frames in the memory will also increase therefore me memory execution time will also increase because it has to access those stack frames that is why we go for the set jump and the long jump functions if you use those functions how much it is going to reduce is see here only the stack frame for the main only one stack frame is there and you don't have another any other stack frames of the other three functions so much as space has been reduced how exactly this problem gets solved with the uh, the set jump and the long jump is see here the same function but here you see one new type of data type called jmp underscore buf this is a, a new data type it is very similar to this int float whatever you have seen this is an another data type jmp underscore buf that is why we said c program what you have studied it is just a 20 percent still in the first year still so much of uh, libraries that still you have not seen itself it is very huge the c programming language and it is very strong also that is why they are going to use it for designing the operating system okay this is a new data type jmp underscore buf and we have declared one variable called jump buffer one global variable will they have declared see the main function uh, one a character array see there are two functions set jump and long jump two functions are there to reduce the size We'll reduce the font or else you cannot see it. Hmm. Hey, yeah. this set jump function, it is going to return if you directly call it. If you directly call it means like this. If set jump of jump buffer, if you directly call it, it is going to return you zero. If you call it, from the other function call it from the other function means there is a function called long jump it takes two parameter one will be the jump buffer another one will be the integer value if you call this function 
indirectly it will call this set jump in two ways you can call this set jump function one is directly you can call or else if you call long jump the control will go to the set jump in two ways you can call it if you call directly like this set jump of jump buffer this is empty this is empty it returns zero then if condition is not satisfied then what it will do it will come to the while loop what happens next in this while loop it stores the uh, what the user enters it stores what the user enters in the variable called line character array it will pass the control to the do line it will pass this line to the do line then the same code it will come to the do line it will come to the do line since we have not written that code but now we will copy paste it the control will come to the do line whenever the control comes to the command underscore add whenever the control comes to the command underscore add see if the token is not there we have started searching for the token if you don't find the token itself means the token is less than zero we have called the long jump the jump buffer comma one what is this one is if you call with this it can be any number you can give when this number it will be reflected in the return type of the set jump is it clear this number will be reflected here if you don't find the token you are calling the long jump the jump buffer comma one the control will come back to this line then the return type of this set jump will be the return type of the set jump will be one because there the long jump is jump buffer comma one since it is not equal to zero it will print the message error there is no token if you pass it as two then the return type of the set buffer will be two if you write it as hundred then the return type of the the set jump will be the hundred you have understood the meaning of what is the use of this number but what is this jump buffer is doing is this data type whatever the stack frame is to store the values what the stack frame this one what the stack frame is to store the information about this do line now everything is get stored in this a single variable this jump buffer it gets everything stored in this jump buffer all the information return addresses everything whenever there is a long jump directly it will come back to this line and all the values which has been stored in the jump buffer it gets uh, removed from the jump buffer and it will set back to the the stack instead of storing it in the stack frame we have stored temporarily in the jump buffer whenever we call here everything is get stored in the jump buffer the address the address of this ninth ninth line this address of this information get stored in this jump buffer because it has a future sense that at some case the control will come back to this line that is why the here this address this line address it will be stored in this jump buffer whenever the control go to this long jump already that content is there i want to go back now since the content is already there in the jump buffer it will come back directly to this line so it gets the return address from this jump buffer and in the return type it will give that number and it will print whenever you use like this instead of the function calls if you use like this if you open the memory only the stack frame for the main will be there and the other stack frames will not be present after the long jump has been called if you check the uh, memory there will not be a stack frames
that is the advantage memory you have saved if you go through the program once again then it will be clearly understand one more thing one more thing i have to demonstrate here i'll show it in the the textbook i think you have heard uh, the automatic variable the global variables See here, there is an automatic variable, uh, a global variable, static variable. There are so many different types of variables are there. See here how exactly this uh, function, uh, the variables, is going to affect the different types of variables. See, there is a function here called void. See this function, uh, there are so many, uh, these are the function declarations, don't worry about this. Now we are demonstrating the uh, different types of variables, a global variable, automatic variable, register variable, volatile variable, static variable. These are the different types of variables are there. You have seen only these things, I think, in the C, a static variable and the, the normal integer. This is called as an automatic variable. Still, there are different types of variable, register variable and volatile variable. We have declared some four variables here. We have initialized those values to 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Global variable 1, the other variables 2, 3, 4, 5. Then there is a function called set jump. 100% it is not going to come inside because if you directly call it, it will return zero. It will not come inside. It is not going to print anything. Next. We are overwriting the values of the global variables. Initially, it was 1 to 5. Now we have changed it to 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Then we are calling some function called f1. Four values. f1. What we are doing here? We are printing in F1 and we are printing those variables. Whenever you print this, what is the content it is going to print is 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Because before this function call, these are the values. Even the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it has been overwrite. Now, the next line of this is F2. It will come to the long jump. Now there is a long jump. Whenever you see this function called long jump, directly the control will come to this 17th line where the set jump is there. What will be the return type? Here it is 1. The return type will be 1. The control will come inside. After the long jump, whenever you print the variables, it will once again 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Because before this execution, these are the values. But whenever you execute, there is a two types of execution. One is with the optimization, without optimization. Optimization is nothing but you want to reduce the execution time. You want to reduce the code size. If you want to do these things, then whenever you compile, you have to add some extra options. iPhone O, iPhone O1, iPhone O2. 
iPhone O, iPhone O S, iPhone O Fast. There are so many options are there with the GCC compiler. Whenever you use this optimization, what happens is uh, it is going to reduce the uh, the uh, the uh, which one the execution time and also the code size. See the difference. Without the optimization, the values were 95, 96 up to 99. But whenever you optimize the two variables, automatic variable and register variable, automatic and register variable, these two, 96 and 97 has been reached out to 213. It has been reached out to 2 and 3. That two here after the long jump. Why? Because this automatic variable and the register variable, if you don't optimize, all these five variables will get stored in the memory itself. All these five variables will be in the memory itself. But if you try to optimize the code and if you run it, these two variables will get stored in the CPU registers. In the CPU, there is a register. I think you have known so many registers are there. The general purpose register, AX, BX, DX, CX, so many registers, there it gets stored. But all the other remaining variables get stored in the memory itself. That is why whenever you optimize, these values get restored. That is what we want to demonstrate here whenever you use the set jump and the long jump. And if you optimize the code and if you run it, the values get restored that is going to affect only for this automatic variable and register variable, but not for global variables, volatile variables and static variables. That is what we have to try to demonstrate here. That's all about the, uh, the first uh, set jump and the long jump. The next we will move to the uh, last uh, topic in this chapter is the get limit and the set limit. See, you have seen the resources. So many resources are the hardware resources are there in the system. These resources, the get limit and uh, uh, set limit functions is going to limit the resources for the process. Always you cannot give all the resources for a single process itself. There should be a limit for each process resources, the hardware resources I'm talking about, the CPU, uh, the memory, the secondary memory, the hard disk, all those things, the cache, everything. You have to limit. In order to, from programmatically, if you want to get the resource limit, there is a function they have already give, uh, given and this, the body they have written inside the this header file, this system dot resource dot h, system slash time dot h. Get limit and set limit will give you the uh, a limit uh, means the resources count. See the second value, this is an integer. The second value, it is a structure. What this structure contains, it contains the soft limit and the hard limit, the maximum limit. And then and this another one is the current limit. Another one is the current limit and what is the maximum limit that both has been uh, defined and you have to pass it as a parameter. Even if the soft limit and the hard limit you can change. It can be less than or equal to the soft limit can be less than or equal to the hard limit or any process can lower its hard limit means the maximum limit to the value greater than or equal to soft limit, but only the super user can raise the hard limit. These are the values. Where exactly you will get it, those values, what is the maximum limit? There are inbuilt variables, inbuilt variables that is already been defined and they have given you with some with names like this, R limit underscore core, R limit underscore CPU r limit underscore data see all these variables you have not defined the user it is been come up with the unix operating system itself if you check if you print these values you will get what is the maximum size in the bytes of the data segment what is the maximum size in the bytes that the can be created file that can be created 
r limit underscore f size if you use this you will get the maximum size how exactly if there are so many variables are there in the program in the program if you see you will clearly understand it see we have written one function do it do it name for the do it function see here directly it is going to say here hash define we have passed if you directly pass this r limit underscore core it will be directly replaced as pr underscore limit r limit underscore core r limit underscore core is me the meaning is the uh, directly it is going to call this function pr underscore process limits the process limits so many values are there so many times we are doing do it function do it function you have called for all the supported uh, the uh, as defined functions what is there inside this function the static uh, pr limits there is a structure you get the limit if the limit if you don't get it less than zero means there is a problem with the get limit or else it will print if the limit current limit is infinite it will print it as infinite or else it will print the current limit one one thing soft limit we have printed if the maximum limit is infinity it will print it as infinity or else it will print it as what is the maximum limit what is the maximum limit if you see the output it looks like this when you run the program see in the free bsd operating system when you run <coughs> for as it will print it as to infinite for core if you check it is as infinite any num any length the code segment is it can be any length cpu it can be infinite size data segment this size is limit the file size this is also infinite see what we are trying to print here is one more Rem remember this whenever you call this do it it will be replaced like this it's just a preprocessor a single value it will be replaced with one with the double quotes another directly with this value what is this pr underscore limit is doing is it is directly printing those value one is current limit it is going to print the soft limit it is going to print another one is hard limit it is trying to print that's all two things it is trying to print if it is infinite it will print the message as infinite or else what is the value whether if it is infinite current lim uh, soft limit it is infinite or else what exactly the limit one by one all the functions are called whatever the list i have shown all the functions are called do it do it everything is get replaced then you will get the the entire the output that's all with this chapter we have discussed this chapter the environment of an unix process the unix kernel support we'll discuss the next topic we'll discuss the uh, the process control and the next uh, how to create the process process ids in the next class thank you